legendary King Arthur, the true king who pulled the sword from the stone, the man who established the Knights of the Round Table, the monarch who saved Britain. King Arthur is firmly established in romantic literature and folklore, but was he actually real? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that looks to delve into all manner of topics from history, politics, science, space and popular culture. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm asking, was King Arthur a real person? Before we jump into this video, I just want to ask you guys to tell me your favourite king or queen throughout history. My favourite has to be King Henry VIII, one of history's greatest villains. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and I look forward to reading them. Also, while you're down there, why not hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. Ok, King Arthur, the legendary Arthur. Arthur! He has enjoyed cultural historical fame for hundreds of years. If you were asked to name 10 things in association with King Arthur, you would probably say The Sword in the Stone, Excalibur, Queen Guinevere, Sir Lancelot and the Knights of the Round Table, The Battle of Camelon, Camelot, The Battle of Barden, Merlin and Avalon. How many of these things are real though? King Arthur was supposed to have fended off the Saxon invaders in the late 5th and early 6th centuries. He is seemingly first mentioned in text by Welsh writer and historian Nanias. This was in the 9th century and then he was popularised by Geoffrey of Monmouth who wrote the history of the kings of Britain in the 12th century. Nanias work is presented as fact, although lists 12 different battles that the much famed warrior king allegedly fought in. The only issue was that the battles took place in so many different locations and years that it is highly unlikely that the famed hero would have been able to fight in all of them. This has led many historians to suspect that Arthur was not one, but many leaders, fused together in one legend over time. Geoffrey of Monmouth's depiction is much more fanciful, describing his magic sword, his beautiful wife, Lancelot the Knight, his trusted left hand man, and the wizard Merlin. While Monmouth's account ignited the fire of the legend, it was at a time that fact and folklore were often fused and people believed in gods and monsters. Let's draw back to the 10 things most closely associated with Arthur and see if any of them have any grounding. Avalon, first identified by Monmouth for example, has been located as the former island of Glastonbury Tor, a real place in Somerset, England. The location of Camelot is much debated, with some people claiming it to be Wessex and others saying it's Wales. The majority however agree that it is likely a fictitious city. While many battles took place between English kings and the Saxons, the first mention of the Battle of Camelon appears in the 10th century Annales Cambrai, although the date of the battle is given as 537 AD, which worries historians as to the legitimacy of the claims. While some locations and battles may sketchily align with stories of Arthur if you squint really, really hard, there is no hard historical evidence for his existence, much less the existence of a magic sword, a helpful wizard friend, etc, etc. The lack of literature about Arthur from his own era is worrying for Arthurians who want to legitimise the king. That being said, not much in terms of art or text do exist from the 5th and 6th century, so even if he had been documented, it's likely that the scripture would have been lost over time. As Dorsey Armstrong, a professor of medieval literature at Purdue University said, no one was keeping good records because they were trying to survive, and that's one reason the legend became so popular. And that's just it, perhaps. Maybe an Arthur character did exist, perhaps he was a noble warrior like so many hailed him to be. In those days, as Armstrong said, people didn't tend to write things down. Instead, stories were told by bards and entertainers, and then told by your average Joe at the pub having a good old pint of mead. In the days before widespread entertainment sources, these stories were all people had, and they reveled in making them more and more elaborate. While there isn't any way to know for sure, I would put my money on there being a shred of truth to the legends of King Arthur, but a shred may well be all it is. Nonetheless, with or without a shred, the legend has prevailed and makes up part of the matter of Britain. Great British leaders that we irrefutably know to be true, including King Henry VIII and Queen Victoria, have drawn on the legend for political purposes. King Arthur means something real to the people and history of Britain and beyond, and in that respect, yeah, he is real. So what do you guys think? Was King Arthur a real person? Do you believe in the legend? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to let me know who your favourite king or queen throughout history has been. Also, why don't you let me know what question you would like me to answer next. For now, I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, stay curious, stay alert and never ever stop questioning.